All right, for those of you who miss or want to review, this is going to be the chapter on the axial skeleton. When we talk about the skeleton, we have the appendicular and the axial. The appendicular were how many bones? 126, and the axial is going to be 80. So when we talk about the axial, the axial is going to be the skull, uh, the vertebral column, and including the ribs and the sternum. All right? So when we talk about the skull, you already know two of the bones of the skull. So what was the forehead called? Frontal, so this is the frontal bone. And what was the base of the skull called? Occipital. The bone is called the occiput, but it is the occipital bone. Okay? Um, so if we look at the size of the, of the bone of the skull, um, they are the parietal. Just like the outside coverings of your serous membranes are called your parietal membranes, the outside covering the majority of the superior lateral portion of the skull is going to be the parietal bones. Okay? If we look below that, we have something between frontal, something between parietal, something between this bone here called temporal, called squamous, okay? No, called sphenoid. The squamosal suture is near it. So when we talk about the sphenoid bone, you only see a piece of sphenoid inside. The squamosal suture comes near it because the squamosal suture is between temporal and parietal. And we'll call, go over this, the uh, sutures in a little bit. Now, again, I am holding the skull. Right now, I'm holding the bone surrounding the brain. Surrounding the brain is the cranium. All the bones of the cranium are part of the skull, but not all the bones of the skull are part of the cranium. Your bottom jaw, does it protect the skull? It is part of the skull, but does it protect the brain? Does it protect the brain? So it's not part of the cranium. So sometimes they refer to the bones of the cranium, uh, the bones of the cranial vault. Okay? So, again, the bone where your ear hole is, is the temporal bone. And the temporal bone has a hole in it right here where sound comes in, and that's called the external acoustic meatus or the external auditory meatus, called the EAM. I will take on the practical EAM as an abbreviation. Capital E, capital A, capital M. And again, a meatus was a canal-like passageway. It also has a bump on here called the mastoid process. It looks like a little tiny breast. And over here, we have something, and this one's broken off, and this one's broken off, but over here, there'd be a little tiny stylus or a little tiny projection. It's right here on this model, and that's called the styloid process of temporal. So we have the styloid process of temporal. We have the styloid process of radius and the styloid process of ulna, okay? So again, we're going to see these words repeated. We're going to see these words repeated. Now, earlier we talked about this bone called sphenoid. This right here is the sphenoid bone. There's a, upper, a greater wing and a lesser wing, but if you look at the middle of sphenoid, we have this indentation here called the sella tersica, and specifically the indentation of sella tersica is called the hypophyseal fossa. Now, where the heck are we in the book? If we turn to your book to figure 9.3a, uh, we're looking at the inside of the skull. In your book, it's pink. So we have the greater wing of sphenoid, the lesser wing of sphenoid, and we have, again, this scylla tersica, which is the indentation, and the indentation is the hypophyseal fossa. Now, this can sound crazy, what is the hypothesis? It's a trick question. What's an educated guess? A hypothesis. The hypothesis is the name for pituitary gland. Okay? So we'll learn about that when we talk about the endocrine system. But that's where your pituitary gland, the master gland, that's going to uh, regulate your thyroid, regulate your pancreas, regulate your ovaries. It's going to regulate your adrenal glands. So we're going to use this master gland to control other glands. And it's protected not only by the skull, but by its own bony covering. So that's pretty neat. If we look at the hole inside of the sphenoid bone, it goes right through the orbit, okay? And that's called the optic canal, sometimes referred to as the optic foramen, depending on your book. And that right there is the hole where the nerve that supplies the eye. 
If we look inside the orbit, the, the bony socket around the eye, we see these greater and lesser orbital fissures. I said a fissure was like a crack in a bone, kind of like an earthquake, opening up something, a fissure, a slit. So from there we have, again, the lesser wing, the greater wing, the cella turcica, and the optic foramen or optic canal, all part of the bone from the sphenoid, but we can also see sphenoid here. It's going to be in front of temporal, behind frontal, and underneath parietal, but you can only see a tiny portion of it there. So let's look at the lateral view of the book, uh, figure uh, 9.1, and again, the sphenoid is in purple. Um, we have the temporal, the occipital in the back, the frontal in the front. And now look at your high cheekbones. The cheekbones are going to be called the zygomatic bone. And to do the zygomatic bone, we're going to look at this right here called the zygomatic arch. And here's where it gets complicated. This bone right here, the cheekbone, is the zygomatic bone. This is the zygomatic arch. It is made up of two processes. On the temporal bone, it has the zygomatic process of temporal. And on the zygomatic bone, it has the temporal process of zygomaticus. Is that in your book? No. So just remember, there's two processes that make up the zygomatic arch. I'm holding the arch right here. On the temporal bone is a zygomatic process. On the zygomatic bone, is a temporal process. It's no different than having the radial notch on ulna. We wouldn't call it the ulnar notch. It's on the ulna. It's the notch that the radial head sits in for supination and pronation when we move our hand over. Okay? Very good. If we look inside the skull, inside the skull, you're going to see at the front, by temporal, this little bone right here called the ethmoid bone. And the ethmoid bone I call the iceberg. Because it kind of looks like this here, here, holes, there, here, and there. But looking at it from here, you can only see two parts. The part sticking up at the top, called the Christogalli. And the holes on the side of what's called the cribiform plate. And those are called the olfactory foramen. Later on, we'll learn that the olfactory nerve is the nerve for smell. And that's where the nerves go from the skull into the nasal cavity for the sense of smell. Okay. Now, you can't really see all the ethmoid because it's behind the nose. It's underneath the nose, underneath the nasal bones. So if we look at the front picture of the skull, if we look at figure 9.5, you can see the ethmoid bone away from the skull pulled apart. And there's a certain piece here called the perpendicular plate. Sometimes the cribriform the, uh, plate is called the lateral plate. But the perpendicular plate, you can see if you look at, fig at figure 9.6, look inside the nose, it's this orange thing on top. And that's the perpendicular plate of ethmoid inside the skull on the top. Don't get this confused with this one that's sticking out the bottom, because that is, what color is that? It's going to be a, kind of a bluish, and that's called the vomer. The vomer is the bottom thing that sticks out, the bottom of the nasal cavity. But to see the vomer clearly, we have to turn the skull over at the bottom. So to see this, we're going to turn to figure, and I'm jumping around, 9.2. The bottom of the skull, to see the vomer, you see the hard palate that makes up la 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 where your tongue would touch. It's made up of two parts. The hard palate is the maxillary palate, then you have the palatine palate, and then below the palatine bone, we have the vomer. And again, it's going from the base going upward through the nose. Yes? Because we're going to have uh, the superior, middle, inferior nasal conche on the inside, soft tissue to increase surface area where hair can moisten, filter, and warm our air as it goes through. Um, and then again, um, you're going to have the nerves inside here. We have different sinuses, and again, the nerves for smell. 
of the olfactory nerves. Okay. Honestly, I don't know why the vomer's there because the deaf one would do the job. Looks like it says bone somewhere assists in our sense of feeling. Not so much, sit, uh, uh, but they more protect. They more protect the, the, the nerves. Yes. So for the olfactory foramina, we can also call it the cribriform plate or the lateral plate. No, the the la the cribriform plate is this area that goes this way. The holes in the cribriform plate are the olfactory foramen, and that's where the olfactory nerves are going to pass through. Okay. How are we on time? Good? All right. So let's go back to the lateral view of the skull, figure 9.1. I've already alluded to this when we talked about joints. The synarthroidal joints of the skull don't move, okay? They are the unmovable joints, even though they move as a child because your skull isn't completely fused. So the one joint between temporal and parietal is the squamosal suture. Well, we know that squamosal means thin, flat, and scaly, and if we look at it, it kind of looks thin, flat, and scaly, like our epithelium. And now, between the two parietal bones is the suture here. What plane is it in? Sagittal, so that's your sagittal suture. Look at between frontal and parietal, going in the coronal plane is your coronal suture, which we also called frontal plane. The other name for frontal was coronal. And going back in the base of the skull between occiput and the two parietal bones. And you guys remember the movie uh, Revenge of the Nerds? Remember the trilambs? Well, lambdoidal means triangular, and we have the lambda symbol here, the lambdoidal suture. So those are the sutures you want you to know between occiput and parietal, parietal and parietal, parietal and frontal, and temporal and parietal. Three minutes. All right. Very good. And again, here's a good picture of a sutural bone. This is a vermian bone. It is one of the bones that fill in the suture gaps. Okay? The suture gaps. All right. We alluded that the top jaw is called the maxilla. The bottom is called the mandible. The maxilla are two, well, right and left maxillae. And then again, the mandible is a single bone. At the front, we have these uh, foramen called the mental foramen because mental meant chin, and then in the underside, way down under here, we have this thing called the mandibular foramen. It's where on your suits or your skulls, the hinge joint is fastened, okay? The hinge joint's fastened. And that's where your inferior alveolar nerve is gonna go. This is the nerve that goes to all your teeth. When you get a root canal, that's what they numb, or that's where they're going, okay? Um, well, that's for the bottom teeth at least. Um, all right, so let me just look at the skull. Did we forget anything? face of the skull. Going through the occiput where your spinal cord would go is the foramen magnum. Now when we talked last week about a rounded articular joint, what was that called? Think of the tibia. Think of the femur. The lateral and the medial condyles, right? So you're going to have a right and left occipital condyles. And this is where it's going to articulate with the first bone in the neck. Okay? So that when we look at the neck, the bone's going to sit just like this on the skull, and it's going to allow us to nod our head. Okay? Very good. Just looking over the rest of it, we talked about the uh, F, we talked about um, the mastoid process, the zygomatic process of temporal, the external auditory meatus. We went over vomer, the arches. We went over the ethmoid, we went over sphenoid, we went inside, oh, the nasal bones are on the top of the nose, and then on the inside here, where our tear ducts are going to flow, is the lacrimal bone. Look, some of the people call it the lacrimal bone, I call it lacrimal, okay? The lacrimal bone or lacrimal bone. We went over ethmoid, we went over the wing, we went over the jaw, top jaw, there's a whole bunch of sinuses in here, which if any of you have allergies can understand the sinuses. We look inside the orbit to see the superior and inferior orbital fissures and the optic canal or optic foramen. And that is the skull. Let's go ahead and take a break and pause it.